What is up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Keto Coach Lauren here. And today I am doing the long awaited video on my hormones, how I've managed to heal them, how I've managed to heal my adrenal fatigue, and how I've been able to lose now 16 and a half pounds in about 11 weeks. I'm going to start from the beginning because to understand where I'm at now, you have to kind of know my history. So, um, a little backstory on me. When I was in the third grade, I started my menstrual cycle. That is super early. If you know anything about the female body, that is beyond premature for a female to experience their first period. Um, we have some ideas of why that happened. Um, I have a lot of theories because of the research that I've done. Uh, you know, the world that we live in is very estrogenic. And if you've never read um, Dr. Anthony J's book, Estrogeneration, you need to because it's going to change your life. It's probably going to scare you and it's probably going to make you reevaluate everything that you do in your daily routine. Uh, it's a, it talks a lot about plastics, a lot about the chemicals and things that we put on our body as far as perfume, makeup, um, you know, the things that we're exposed to and how everything around us is full of estrogen and how that can, can affect your body. So, um, but back to my history. So I started my menstrual cycle in third grade. Uh, my mom took me to a doctor, uh, the gynecologist that actually delivered me as an infant, um, and he ran some tests and it was found out um, that I was estrogen dominant. So the early onset menstrual cycle was due to a surge in hormones that I was producing. So they put me on a progesterone kind of pill to balance me out. Now this is third grade, so you're talking like seven, eight, nine, I can't remember my age. I believe I was eight years old. Um, so I've been on some kind of hormone pill since that young. Now, fast forward a few years after dealing with heavy, heavy periods, um, a very out of whack menstrual cycle, meaning that I would have like two weeks on, one week off, two weeks on, maybe two weeks off, three weeks on. I mean, it was very irregular, even with the um, hormone pill that I was taking. Um, fast forward a couple years after dealing with all of that, at the age of 13, I was put on birth control. Um, and of course, this is precautionary because parents get scared when kids start, you know, exploring things and you're exposed to more things at school. And so it was precautionary. It was my mom's judgment. And, you know, at the time she had no idea um, the effects of birth control. And so I don't hold it against her at all for doing what she felt best as a parent. So, um, since the age of 13, I have been on birth control until I was 21 and started trying to have a child. So that's a long time to be on birth control, to not have a normal like regulatory process that my body could do on its own. I kind of put a band-aid on my you know, hormones. And I never experienced any negative side effects of birth control aside from gaining a little bit of weight. I think that attributed to some of my weight gain. Um, you know, it controlled my acne very well. I had a regular cycle. I didn't have any pain or anything with my cycles. Um, so birth control was great. It was a magic pill for me to control all of those premenstrual symptoms that you can experience. The day that we started, or the day that we decided we wanted to try to have a baby, uh, I came off of birth control for the first time in seven, eight years. And I let birth control kind of come out of my system for about three months. Um, and then we started trying to have a baby. And I got pregnant first like right off the bat. And with my history, 
um, a little bit more history. I have had abnormal cells on my cervix. I have had um, a cervical cancer scare before and um, you know my family has a history of endometriosis and tons of things dealing with the reproductive system. So the doctor had advised me that it may be difficult for me to get pregnant. Um, that was not the case because I got pregnant right away, which is a blessing. Um, and then, you know, before I got pregnant, I had gained quite a bit of weight. During my pregnancy, I gained 50 pounds. And then once I had my son, um, I started on my weight loss journey. It took me about two years to lose 100 pounds. There was you know, no issues with hormones at that point. I actually went right back on birth control um, because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. And I cycled on and off of birth control for about two years because it didn't work for me like it did before. My body was just, I was, you know, I would have trouble losing weight. Um, even though I did lose 100 pounds, I would just find myself like stalling a lot. Um, my hormones, my cycle was never regular. I just, it didn't feel, it didn't work for me post childbirth like it did before. In December of 2000, 18 last December so a year ago I decided to completely come off of birth control um, the reason being is because I wanted the best chance to be able to lose weight I was starting to do a cut um, and I actually started that cut in September of last year in 2018 um, and I was working with a coach um, just because I needed some accountability and he was offering a different approach than what I was used to. And I'll get more into that here in a minute. But um, I came off of birth control, so it's going to take some time for your body to regulate. Uh, and I noticed some severe issues when I came off of birth control. Paired with the diet that I was following during that cut, which was a carnivore diet, my estrogen dominance spiked back up meaning that um, I was gaining weight, I um, lost my cycle, and though I did lose a little bit of weight, I um, felt horrible. Like, I felt run down, I felt like I was run into the ground, my stress was through the roof, my binge eating came back, um, and, you know, I know that carnivore works for a lot of people, but for someone who's estrogen dominant, if you look at the science behind why leafy greens and veggies are good for someone with estrogen dominance is because there, there is a way that the fiber in those things removes excess estrogen from the body. And I didn't put all of this together until... I realized that going completely carnivore and just eating meat and animal products uh, was attributing to my estrogen dominance. It was, I did, I found this out after tons of research. Um, not only that, but you know, I lost my period for a good like five months, which is not normal for me. So even off of birth control, I still had a monthly period. Things were just not right. My stress levels were through the roof. I felt the stress in my body. Um, I was tired all the time. I, you know, was training really hard and that's on my part because I'm someone who pushes myself beyond my own limits and so I just kept training and kept pushing and then once I decided to stop the cut because my hormones and everything were out of whack, I started gaining weight drastically. After doing tons of research, when I stopped my cut this past March in 2019, um, I did not allow myself to be in a calorie deficit because in order for your body to heal, you cannot be trying to lose weight. It's simple as that. You have to pick a goal. It's just like trying to lose body fat and build muscle at the same time. It's a very rare thing that can happen and so to really give your body the chance to heal fully you need to not be restrictive with your calories now um i gained weight i gained about 20 pounds from where i was in march and that sucked um 
it was hard. It was really, really hard because not only did I gain that weight, but it was at the worst time that I could have gained it because I went to the low carb cruise and I went to KetoCon and I went to NACA competition and I did all of these fun keto events and met people when I was my most uncomfortable. I got to meet incredible people that I connect with on the daily on Instagram and social media and I did not feel my best and did not look my best and mentally that was a huge struggle for me. All of that aside, the one thing that I focused on was not being in a calorie deficit. As hard as it was because I just constantly was seeing the scale go up, I had to allow my body time to heal. About a month after I stopped my cut and I was already up about 10 or 12 pounds, I had some things tested and realized that my estrogen dominance was back. Not only that, but after speaking with Allie Miller, you can look her up. I will also link her stuff in this uh, video below. But I reached out to Allie Miller and explained my symptoms and she has a wonderful line of supplements and I'm going to share them with you in just a second what I took. Um, wonderful line of natural supplements that help kind of balance out your adrenal function, um, kind of help with, you know, just overall balance with your body. Not only did I end up taking the supplements she recommended very, very like strictly, um, and then I also was not in a calorie deficit. I also strategically put things in my diet around certain times of my cycle to try to regulate everything. So I lost my cycle in December of 2018 last year. I stopped birth control early that month. I had one cycle and then I had not had a cycle since. So I went from December 2018 to about June of 2019 without a cycle. Uh, and so in April was when I reached out to Allie and really just dove into uh, how to regulate your cycle, how to get rid of estrogen dominance, how to heal your adrenals, and um, you know how to just I was I did everything I researched like crazy. So because I was following a carnivore diet during my cut. Um, when I reintroduced vegetables back into my life, I immediately bloated. Uh, when you reintroduce things that your body has not had for an extended period of time, you're going to experience some digestive upset. So the people who claim going carnivore, uh, and then trying to reintroduce veggies, you know, back in and you're experiencing all these negative symptoms and that's just your body's way of telling you, you don't need them. That's complete bullshit. That's the kindest way I can say it. Um, your body has to get get used to what it didn't have before. So there's gonna be discomfort. There's gonna be digestive upset. There's gonna be bloating. You're gonna feel like crap until your body can kind of get back used to what you have not given it for a long time. I had to give my body time to get adjusted back to veggies again. Now, uh, after I reached out to Allie Miller, she gave me a list of supplements on her supplement line and I'm going to share them with you. Um, but please understand that this is what worked for me and I did this at the advisement of a registered dietitian. That is what Allie Miller is. So if you are having your own symptoms and you're having your own issues, I highly recommend that you reach out to her or someone else. Um, have hormones tested have your adrenals tested, do all of the things so that you can determine what is wrong with you. That way that you're not just taking supplements and wishing for the best. Uh, she recommended I take Calm and Clear. This is Calm and Clear. You can see it. I took this two times a day, once in the morning, once at night. I took adrenal support also uh, twice a day. I also took Adaptogen Boost. You can see that. It'll focus. 
adaptogen boost. And then towards the end, as things are starting get, getting to get regular, because I don't eat a ton of like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, things like that, those are uh, veggies that are really good at removing estrogen from the body. Um, I brought on her Brocco Detox as well. Um, I also took her Relax and Regulate, which is a magnesium supplement. And I loved it. Um, I still take it. Take it every night. Um, currently, I don't take any of these supplements anymore except for the Calm and Clear. I started out using the supplements. And then I also started seed cycling. So at certain points throughout your cycle, you can incorporate some seeds like pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, um, I'm trying to think, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. At certain points of your cycle... You pair two of those together um, before ovulation and then after ovulation. Not only did I do that, um, and there's you know little research about seed cycling that people actually say it works, say it doesn't. I wanted to do all of the things because I wanted the best chance of healing my hormones. Um, so I did seed cycling. I had specific times of my cycle where I incorporated more veggies. So before ovulation, um, and this is for people who are not on birth control. So if your body is naturally regulate, regulating itself, then you can practice all of these things. If you are still on birth control, you do not ovulate. You do not, though you may have a period, that is, that is like, it's not a real period. It's just bleeding from your, your uh, uterus that happens. It's not a real period. Period. That's why you can skip it. That's why you can take a pill and skip it, um, you know, that week with several birth controls. But if you are naturally regulating your hormones in your cycle, then you can incorporate certain foods throughout the month to try to boost certain hormones. So, um, you know, days one to about 14 of my cycle is, you know, when I start my period to the day of ovulation. Um, I am usually very, very low carb during my period, and about day 12 is when I start to incorporate more veggies, about two days before ovulation. Um, and by the way, I track my cycle very strategically every month. I always put in my symptoms in an app, um, and I know when I ovulate because I have a very distinct pain on either side of my body. So I'm very good at tracking my cycle. But usually on day 12 of my cycle, I will incorporate more veggies. The reason is because around ovulation, that's when estrogen spikes. You're about to ovulate. So your body's like, oh, I'm getting ready for a baby. Like I need to produce more estrogen. So with estrogen dominance, Eating more of those veggies, those leafy green veggies that has that fiber in it that kind of removes the excess estrogen from your body, along with the supplements that I take, um, I noticed about two months after really being strict and strategic about when I placed veggies in my diet that I was starting to regulate. Um, ovulation and all of that was non-existent from January until March and then once I reached out to Allie got on these supplements um, and then um, started being strategic with my diet in April I had my first cycle by June which was awesome so I still am very diligent about knowing when to put in more veggies, when to, you know, when it's okay to not have so many. Um, I also use a progesterone cream. It's a very natural cream. Um, I will find that. Okay, so I found the progesterone cream. Um, this is a bioidentical progesterone from Wild Yams. Um, and I would rather do this and I'll show it to you. Um, I'll also link it below. I would rather do this than to take a progesterone pill, but I incorporate the progesterone cream towards the end of my cycle. Um, actually, I do one pump every day except during my period. Um, so from days one to about day five, I don't use it because my body is it's going through its normal cycle. I don't want to add anything extra. But then as soon as I stop my period, I start using one pump towards the end of the month, 
when usually estrogen is higher for me still because I am estrogen dominant, um, you know, after that big surge before ovulation, normal people, you see your estrogen go down. If you don't have a baby, um, your progesterone estrogen levels will go down. You'll have your period. For me, estrogen stays really high and my progesterone doesn't increase or doesn't get to a level where it balances out with estrogen. So, um, after ovulation, I start using two pumps of this and I feel like everything as a whole has allowed me to fully heal. Not only hormone wise, but adrenal health. Adrenal health is something that people, they toss that term and that that phrase around like adrenal fatigue. Oh, it's just because I'm tired. No, adrenal fatigue is real. When you are extremely stressed out, when your hormones are messed up, when your thyroid is messed up, when you've got all of these issues going on, your adrenals can become shot and you don't know what to do. The, the way that I determined that I had adrenal fatigue was because no amount of anything would get me energized. My normal keto diet <laughs> used to have me feeling like I could run 10 miles. Like the energy was insane. I was not recovering from my training, even after deload weeks. Um, I was not sleeping good. I felt constant tension in my neck and my whole body. Um, and, you know, my sleep was terrible. I, my energy was terrible. I was consuming copious amounts of caffeine to try and deal with it. And caffeine does not do anything good for your adrenals. It actually makes them worse. So, um, a few things that I did along with the supplements is I, I reduced my caffeine intake severely, meaning no pre-workouts, um, one cup of like 10 ounce coffee a day. Um, I very was, I was strict with decaf coffee as well because that does still have a little bit of caffeine in it. Um, no energy drinks, which I never did before anyways, but I just, I was very strategic about caffeine. Not only did I limit my caffeine intake, but I changed up my training to be more, uh, to work better for my body instead of to work harder. So I have this saying, train smarter, not harder. Um, and so I was very strategic about how I trained, how much I trained, how often I trained. I was someone who was in the gym five to seven days a week. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I love training. I love it. I, get, I am probably obsessed with it, but uh, I had to dial it back. I had to dial it back to three to five days, um, and ideally I feel my best at four, even now. Um, I was doing quite a bit of cardio to try and keep myself from gaining weight. I cut all cardio out except for steps. I get in my step goal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with trying to hit a certain amount of steps, but any kind of active cardio, I don't do. I only lift. I make sure that I sit in the sauna. Um, I practiced, you know, meditation. It sounds silly, but when you can really zone into a state of meditation where you de-stress, it works. It helps. I also focused on my sleep quality and how long I was sleeping. And, you know, I am someone who gets up super early in the morning to go to the gym. So I forced myself to go to bed earlier. And I forced myself to stay in bed on the weekends to sleep, to try to get as much sleep as possible. Because without sleep, you're not going to recover from anything. So, uh, fast forward to after having all of this work in my favor, um, I started another cut with very great hesitation um, in October. And that was about 11 weeks ago. I have wanted to diet down this entire year, but I focused on healing my body, healing my hormones, healing my adrenal fatigue. I focused on food quality, what I was putting into my body, 
Because if you're someone who is dealing with these symptoms and you're still eating all of the sugar alcohols and the keto treats and the processed keto foods, you're doing yourself an injustice because real healing comes from whole food eating. It's as simple as that. So I am focused on what I put in my body, how much of it I put in my body. I still am taking some supplements. I use the Calm and Clear every day, the Relax and Regulate every day. Relax and Regulate is a magnesium supplement, if I didn't say that already. Um, and then I also use the progesterone cream. And I focus on getting enough sleep. I focus on not training too hard and listening to my body. I still meditate. I still sit in the sauna. Um, but when I started this cut at the beginning of October, I was very hesitant because I didn't want what happened last year to start again. When you put your body in a calorie deficit, you automatically start to experience a little bit higher stress levels. You're tracking your food, you're weighing everything that you're putting in your mouth. You are being very, very strategic with, you know, what you're putting in your body, how much. Um, and so your body goes through a little bit of stress when you aren't giving it enough food. And that's what you have to do to lose weight. You have to be in a calorie deficit. Now, by no means are my calories super low. Um, I started out cutting around 1,900, 2,000 calories. Um, and that was before I hired Christian Unger um, as someone to keep me accountable. Um, I've had several people ask what Christian is doing for me, um, and he is just being the support that I need. I have support at home, but someone who is knowledgeable in the space who also um, can keep me accountable. You know, I check in with him every day. I log my way every day. I ask questions when I need to. Um, and so, you know, even coaches need coaches because I think for all of the clients that I have on a daily basis and a weekly basis. And so sometimes the mental aspect of it for me, I just need someone else to tell me what to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But Christian has been a great help. He's been very attentive to being very careful and conscientious of not lowering my calories too low, not doing things too fast. Um, and it's just so happened that in 11 weeks, I've managed to lose 16 and a half pounds, which is insane. Um, I would have never thought that my body would respond this way. I feel the absolute best that I have felt in months. Um, my cycle is still normal. I am still having my normal, like it is to the day. My cycles are between 28 and 38 days. Um, and I have not experienced any negative symptoms at all. I'm still having veggies. I'm still eating whole quality foods. I am still exercising, but being mindful of how long and how often and how hard I listen to my body and know when it's time to take a break. Um, and it has been such a shock that my body has responded like this. Um, you know, so many people have been like, Lauren, what are you doing? What is your secret? Oh my gosh. Like, like there's some magic pill that I'm taking or some, you know, secret that I'm not sharing. And it all comes down to a healthy, happy body and consistency and discipline. That is it. That is your secret. Uh, when it comes to dieting in general, if you don't have health problems, most often the reason people aren't seeing results is because they're not being disciplined, they're not being consistent, they're cheating, they're, you know, taking bites and licks and tastes of things and not logging them. I literally log everything I put in my mouth. And if those licks, bites, and tastes add up to my daily calorie intake, then I don't have anything else. So it's all about healing your body first, getting answers, reaching out to someone so that they can help you because I am not a doctor. 
what I'm sharing with you is experience from what I have gone through. Um, but I'm not a doctor. If you message me and you say, I think I have the same thing as you. What did you take? I'm not going to tell you exactly how much I take or what all I take. Like, I've shared with you the supplements. But um, it is so... It is, it is best to reach out to a professional because I can only share with you what's worked for me um, as far as healing goes. Otherwise, you need to have tests done. You need to have things looked at. Find a doctor that will listen to you and not just, you know, say everything's fine. Usually, if you're having trouble losing weight, there are underlying issues. Um especially if you're being consistent and disciplined. So, my top takeaways from this video is reach out to someone. If you're struggling with things similar to me, reach out to a medical professional. I know Allie Miller is phenomenal. I don't know her availability, um, but she has a um, person that she also practices with named Becky. They're both phenomenal. If you find someone local, then do that. Um, have hormones tested, have your adrenals, your thyroid, everything tested. Seek answers and don't stop until you get those answers. Don't stop because if you, if you stop seeking answers, then you're giving up on yourself. You're giving up on what you want most, which is to lose weight, feel better, and have a healthy body. So, number one, ask questions, seek out help, find some answers. Number two, Stay disciplined and consistent. If you don't have any of these issues, then it really truly is about staying in a constant calorie deficit, moving your body, but not over moving because you can overtrain. I have done it plenty of times. That's what got me to such a deep level of adrenal fatigue. Don't overtrain, but move your body. And the consistency is one thing that I will stress. 100 times over and over and over. Track everything you put in your mouth. Be disciplined. We're in the holidays right now and I have absolutely no problem with tracking my food, with staying disciplined, with not giving myself an excuse to go off track. When you have a goal in mind and when you have something that you want to achieve, if you want it bad enough, you will be disciplined and you'll be consistent. It's as simple as that. That may sound cold hearted to some people, but it is true. The way I look at it is that I ate whatever I wanted for a long time and I gave myself excuses for a long time. And when I am focused and goal driven, when I set a goal, I want to achieve it. I'm going to do everything possible to achieve it. So, now that I have a healthy, happy, hormone-friendly, regulated body, it shows because I'm able to lose body fat again. And it's such a sigh of relief, like such a huge weight off my shoulders to know that I'm not broken anymore. Um, and I'm going to be very strategic this time to make sure that I don't experience any of those things again because a healthy, happy body is priority. And yes, I want to lose more weight. Yes, I want to be leaner, but not at the cost of an irregular cycle, a lost cycle, or a shot adrenal system. It's not worth it to me. So um, that is pretty much what I've done to be able to lose that much weight in such a short amount of time. It's just the fact that my body is finally responding because it is happy and it is healthy and I am treating it right. And I think a lot of people suffer with, you know, these issues, but they automatically just want to keep pushing, lower in the calories, exercising more, and you're just stressing your body out. You're just, you're just making things worse. So, my biggest advice to you is to take the time 
to research and understand what you're feeling, write all your symptoms down, reach out to someone for help, and focus on healing the aspects of your life, your body, the things that could be prohibiting you from losing weight. And then your results will come. So I will link everything in the caption below. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or send me messages. Again, remember, I am not a licensed medical person. I'm just sharing what worked for me. Um, and I am so thankful for so many of you who reach out and encourage me each day and compliment me and, you know, say that you can tell that things are changing. You can tell I'm happier. My mood is better. Um, a lot changes when you have worked so hard for a good, happy body and then it responds really well. So um, I'm very grateful for all of you who have been on this journey with me, who have watched me struggle for the last year with gaining weight and being in a dark place again. Um, I'm very grateful that I am self-aware enough to know that I was getting into a very dark place. Um, and I just had to keep pushing and I had to keep the in the forefront of my mind that healing was priority and uh, if you're going through this or if you are struggling or if you just need someone to listen I am here to be an ear for you if you need that so hopefully this answers all of your questions um, hopefully someone can learn something from this and Hopefully it will have you questioning and looking at things a little bit closer uh, about your body and yourself. So I will talk to you guys again soon.